Member statements. The member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, film production in Ontario contributes over $3 billion in economic activity and support over 45,000 jobs, film production, and festivals support and provide cultural bridges, connecting diverse communities, and fostering dialogue and understanding. With Mississauga Malton serving as a central hub for several of its major activities, the International Film Festival of South Asia, IFSA, celebrated their 12th film festival as a shining beacon of cultural celebration, artistic exploration, and economic vitality for Ontario. IFSA Toronto made a significant Im economic impact by attracting local and international participation. It enhanced Ontario's reputation as a global cultural hub. IFSA has actively working to strengthen the South Asian film production and distribution industry in Ontario by promoting the various credits and support provided by the government of Ontario and fostering vital international connections. Mr. Speaker, IFSA Talent Fund, the festival fosters homegrown talent and extends its impact throughout the year with comprehensive learning series and various year-round activities. My best wishes for IFSA Toronto to continue being a cultural and economic catalyst in Ontario as it evolves and expands as a symbol of Ontario's commitment to cultural diversity and creativity. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. Yesterday, on November 1st, an unprecedented 12 Waterloo Region ambulances were on offload delay for up to 15 hours. St. Mary's Hospital, same day, 10 ambulances waiting to offload. Paramedics say that they are facing a crisis that can no longer be ignored. This is dangerous. It's happening across Ontario with no cure offered by the Ford government. Offload delays occur when paramedics cannot transfer the patient, the care of the patient over to the hospital due to a lack of space or staffing. So they are stuck waiting to, instead of responding to calls, usually waiting in a hall in the hospital or a parking lot. When people call 911, it's because they need an ambulance, they need a paramedic, they need medical assistance. It's not one of the calls that you make and you're saying, well, I can stay on hold for an hour. Code reds occur when there are no ambulances available to respond to calls. In Waterloo Region, there were 87 code reds over the first nine months of 2022. John Riches, Chief of Paramedics, calls this deeply concerning. Paramedic Services is currently losing the equivalent of three 12-hour ambulance shifts per day to offload delay. Waterloo is resilient. They've brought in their own local solutions, but let's be honest. The province needs to acknowledge that this is a real issue affecting Ontarians. Code Reds should not be the new normal in the province of Ontario. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Hey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister of Transportation has given the green light to start early planning work for the Shepherd Subway extension, which will examine connecting the current terminus of Line 4 at Don Mills Station with the future Scarborough Subway extension. As part of this work, Metrolinx has also been asked tasked with investigating a possible western extension from Shepherd Young Station to Shepherd West Station at Allen Road. Accordingly, Metrolinx is launching three community consultations meetings this November to seek the input of the community to extend the TTC's current Line 4 along Shepherd Avenue. Input and feedback received from the community members during the consultation is an important component of the initial business case recommendation. Finally, after years of failed promises, endless debates, and redundant votes, the Shepherd extension is one step closer to realization. Commuters in Scarborough deserve the same access to reliable public transit as the people living in downtown Toronto. Delivering safe, faster, and more convenient 
travel options to our commuters is my ultimate goal. It is my honor and privilege to serve the residents of Scarborough Agent Court. Promise made, promise kept. Thank you. Member Statement. The member for Thunder Bay Superior North. Thank you, Speaker. I want to pay tribute this morning to the many nonprofit organizations that operate on inadequate budgets while providing essential services to our communities. Nonprofits provide supports in times of crisis, and they are also the cultural and recreational lifeblood of our communities. Demand for nonprofit services is through the roof, yet the sector is running on fumes. In Thunder Bay, we have lost the important street outreach service known as the SOS, and we have also lost the sexual assault clinic in Victoriaville Mall. These losses are devastating for my community, and the Ontario Nonprofit Network is warning that many more vital services will collapse without significant changes in how the government supports this sector. Organizations struggle to attract and keep staff because one-off project-based funding means that all jobs are short-term and precarious. Organizations need stable, long-term funding that reflects the true cost of delivering services and programs. Without a significant change in how governments deal with the nonprofit sector, it will disappear, and with it, our social cohesion. Government members need to look carefully at the recommendations of the Ontario Nonprofit Network and do what is necessary to support the critical work of these vital community organizations. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member statement, member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, November is Diabetes Awareness Month. As noted by the member from Simpo Gray, this year marks 100 years since Dr. Banting and Dr. McLeod received their Nobel Prize for the discovery of insulin to help people with diabetes. Before that discovery, people with diabetes were people dying of diabetes. And now they are people living with diabetes. Speaker, did you know that 30% of Ontarians live with diabetes, but only 11% are actually diagnosed? And living with diabetes can be a full time job. Those with diabetes need to be pharmacists, dietitians, doctors, mathematicians in their everyday lives. And this is why our government continues to support Ontarians living with diabetes. In March of 2022, we added life-saving, real-time glucose monitoring systems to the ADP program, leading to better self-management, leading to healthier lives. And then in April of this year, our government passed a motion by the amazing MPP from Anglican Lawrence for the Ministry of Health to develop a framework for chronic diseases, including diabetes. Speaker, what started as Banting's research project to save the life of a 13-year-old boy on the brink of death has now became an entire life-saving medical sector. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud to be a part of a government that continues to work towards improving the lives of Ontarians living with diabetes. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you. The Premier said that the Greenbelt is a scam, but we know it's important for the environment and it's the heart of our agriculture industry in Niagara. It's an important part of our local economy through the wine and grape growing industry. My riding and the riding of Niagara West account for nearly 90% of all grapes grown in Ontario. Local farmers are suffering due to the lack of support. An unfair tax structure on 100% Ontario wine and limited shelf space for local wines at the LCBO. Farmers watch their grapes rot on the vine while the government ignores their struggles. It's not right that the Conservatives prioritize wine from other countries over local wines. We need a level playing field, support from our local industry, our grape growers, and the land they work on. The LCBO must st step up and provide more shelf space for Ontario wines. Our local wineries create jobs, boost tourism, drive our economy. They deserve better. It's time we come together to protect our greenbelt and support our Niagara wine and grape growing industry. We must ensure our farmers can thrive, not just survive. The time is now to stand up for our local economy and the environment we hold dear. 
Let's make Ontario's greenbelt and wine industry stronger than ever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. Member for Bruce Gray, Owen South. Thank you, Speaker. Last Sunday, it was my pleasure to be at the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 6 in Owen Sound for a great event put on by the Billy Bishop Museum honouring nine local veterans in our Grey Bruce community. Colleagues, as you may know, Billy Bishop was a Canadian flying ace in the First World War. He was officially credited with 72 victories, making him the top Canadian and British ace of the war. He also received a Victoria Cross. What you may not know about Billy Bishop was that he was born and grew up in the great community of Owen Sound. Billy Bishop's home on 3rd Avenue West is now a wonderful museum where visitors can learn more of the history of this great Canadian hero. Last Sunday, the Billy Bishop Museum and Owen Sound Legion again hosted a wonderful event to honour nine local veterans. The event was attended by many family members and friends of the honorees because, as we know, when veterans serve, their families also serve. We heard about the amazing service of these veterans, their perseverance, their dedication, and their commitment to our country. Sergeant Terry Bates, Private Alvin Cameron, Leading Seaman William Cutting, Lieutenant Luella Denton, Private Don Desjard John Desjardins, Lieutenant Colonel James Gale, Ordinary Seaman John Garvey, Sergeant Leonard Smith, and Sergeant Wallace Sprung. Thank you to all these great nine Grey Bruce veterans, your actions and have given us the way of life we are all so lucky to enjoy today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, time is money. The time wasted in the Conservative government's shady Greenbelt deals, digging a hole and filling it in, getting it done and then getting it undone has delayed the building of housing. Time is money. A minister resigned and staff was replaced. The new minister, after he took the time to get up to speed, even had to compensate municipalities. Pickering and Grimsby spent $442,000 for time spent working on green belt removals. Others will have to be compensated for the time wasted on shady, undone urban boundary expansions. Time is money. Now interest rates have gone up. Housing projects are stalled. Why didn't the Conservative government follow their own task force or any of the task forces from cities across Canada since rents started taking off in 2018? Why didn't they eliminate exclusionary zoning, make it legal to build the medium density and mixed neighbourhoods we need instead of waiting for the federal government to hold their hand and show the way? Time is money. Now the Conservative government is following the federal lead and cutting the HST on purpose-built rentals. That's great, but why wait to have their hand held by the federal government? Why couldn't they have done this much earlier? This government has wasted the time of Ontarians, wasted their money, and wasted this province's opportunity to prosper and thrive. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Oakville. Yeah, thank you. Madam Speaker, as Remembrance Day draws near, it becomes even more important for us to honour the brave Canadian heroes who have sacrificed so much to defend our freedom, rights and democracy. During times of war, every Canadian in every province, regardless of age, came together in their own way, all aiming for a common goal, which was peace. Speaker, our brave men and women gave their lives for freedom and peace, not just for us, but for future generations. Remembering their sacrifice is vital. We must never forget the courage and commitment they showed. We must never forget the likes of an Oakville resident whose name stands etched on the Bronte Cenotaph. This cenotaph, located in the centre of Bronte Village by the lake, honours those individuals from World Wars I, II and Korea. It stands in Chris Vokes Memorial Park, dedicated to Major General Christopher Vokes, an Oakville resident and distinguished World War II veteran. Major General Vokes exemplified courage. He led the 1st Canadian Infantry Division through several bat battles in Italy and Germany, the most famous, of course, which many know, the capture of Ortona. While the park recognizes Major General Vokes, the Bronte Cenotaph is a tribute to everyone who served. It tells us we must always remember, and I hope that everybody in Ontario will take time this November 11th to remember the brave individuals who gave their lives for our country, lest they forget.
Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. It's a privilege to rise here today and to speak about one of the most important days of the year, Remembrance Day. It's the day that we all take a pause to remember the immense sacrifices of Canadian men and women who made, which they made in World War I, World War II, Korea, Afghanistan, and countless peacekeeping operations around the globe. It is truly hard to imagine what our veterans have done and continue to do to fight for freedom that we all so enjoy in Ontario and Canada. In my riding at Perth Wellington, we are fortunate to have a great sense of patriotism and pride in our veterans. In my own family, Speaker, my great uncles helped liberate Rome in World War II. The town of Arthur is known as Canada's most patriotic village because of the extraordinary efforts in the Second World War. It holds a series of beautiful memorials and monuments in their downtown core to honour those who have fought. And earlier this year, the city of Stratford lost an amazing World War II veteran, Art Boone. Who have, he was a veteran of the Normandy invasion on D-Day, a tank crew member, someone who shared his stories with the next generation countless times and was the longtime MC of the Stratford Remembrance Day ceremony. And this will be the first year without our present speaker. Speaker, I know all of us in this place are truly grateful for Canada's men and women that don the uniform day in and day out, lest we forget. Thank you. That concludes our member's statements.